Okay, welcome back to part two of the Esoteric Nerd interview with Julia Desmond, Oneness Meditator and Oneness Coach. If you haven't caught video one, you're going to want to go back and watch that first because a lot of great information about her and this oneness phenomenon that's going out there in the world. So we're going to start this video from jumping right into this Diksha or this oneness blessing. Talk to me a little bit about Diksha and what, what is this all about and how is it helping people awaken? Absolutely. Diksha is a Sanskrit word. It actually means benediction, benediction of divine grace. It's an ancient tool that's been around uh, mankind for thousands and thousands of years. It's a tool that's been used to help mankind awaken into higher states of consciousness. It is now just resurfacing within mankind's collective consciousness to help the great awakening that, that's happening. Everyone heard about the great shift of 2012 and you know the great times that we're in now. This is the next great age of enlightenment. So the tool of the Diksha is now uh, within the hands of millions of people around the planet. Uh, every culture, every socioeconomic background uh, it is utilizing this wonderful tool. And it's actually divine consciousness that comes in and helps to shift your brain. It helps to awaken your chakras, but also awaken your brain and move into higher states of consciousness. It's activating the frontal lobe, which is the seat of enlightenment. It's also deactivating the parietal lobe in the brain, which is the part of the brain that uh, causes that sense of separation within us, uh, the mind chatter, uh, the loneliness, the depression. So there's a lot that's going on with this divine consciousness, this energy of the activating the various parts of the brain and moving us into higher states of consciousness. Beautiful. What a, what a handful of wonderful things that Diksha does all at once. I love it. So uh, again, this, we talked about this a little bit in video one. But the best way to, to get connected with the Adiksha Blessing or uh, to learn to be a Adiksha Blesser would be to jump on to which website again? It's onenessusa.org. And to become a Oneness Blessing giver or Diksha giver, you would go through a two-day awakening course. It's, it's known as a Oneness Awakening course. And those are happening literally on every corner within North America. Uh, we have probably 1,500 Oneness trainers around North America that are empowered to uh, initiate people into becoming Diksha givers in a two-day course. Awesome. So now let's kick it up a notch. Let's talk about this oneness meditation or this, I think it's also called Om meditation. Is that true? Yes, that's true. Okay, so so tell me about this because I've experienced it and uh, I can tell the people listening it's amazing, but it it's it might be different for those some people out there walking into a room about to deal you know to go through a oneness meditation. So tell us about this because I think it's awesome. Yeah, the oneness meditation is a whole nother uh, step up in the game of awakening. It's a very powerful transfer of divine energy through the oneness meditator's eyes. There are 25 of us oneness meditators in North America, and I happen to be one of them. The whole process of giving the oneness meditation is where the divine presence literally consumes us and then comes through our gaze and our presence. So uh, for brand new people, uh, we are very specific when we look around the room. We gaze into each person's eyes, and the divine consciousness is, is flowing through our eyes and helps activate the awakening in the person who's receiving it. We also give the oneness meditation with our eyes closed as well, and then it comes to our presence. What does it feel like to be in that moment, if you're able to share that? What is it like for you when you're actually in front of people allowing divine grace to flow through? I have to say it's one of the coolest things I've ever experienced in my life. It's because I've been initiated to go into a very high state of consciousness, and when that happens, literally the presence comes in and consumes me. So the personality, Julia, is way off to the side. I just become an extremely empty vessel. And during the process of going into state, the presence consumes me. And like I said, I'm a mystic, so I experience the light coming in and literally filling up my whole being. And then when I open my eyes and look around the room, it's this pure avataric light or this golden light is coming through my eyes and connecting with the divine presence in each person I look into, into their eyes. So it's the most exquisite experience because I'm truly connecting with the individual in front of me, and I'm connecting with what they're going through. Uh, and it just comes from a deep level of compassion. There's no judgment whatsoever when I'm connecting with what that person is experiencing. It's just a deep level of compassion and of uh, the divine meeting the divine in that person and helping them grow. 
So are you telling me that being a oneness meditator in your 40s is better than partying with your friends in your 20s? Thousand percent. All right, all right. You heard it from her first. Especially <laughs> in your 20s. Sort of <laughs> all right, cool. Um, so you that was interesting. You said um, when you are allowing this divine grace to flow through you, and you did a beautiful job of explaining that, when you are actually looking at the individual, and you looked at me before and other people, of course, when you're looking at that individual, you're connecting with the divine in them or something within them. Could you elaborate a little bit on that? Absolutely. I go into a high state of consciousness where I realize the divine in everybody. So we're all made up of this essence. And when I actually look out into the crowd, if it's a crowd of 100 people, all I see is the divine coming through 100 people's eyes as light. And some, you know, I feel, you know, if they're going through a sadness or a depression or struggles or charges. And then some I can feel their state as happiness or bliss or joy. And it, but it's still the same divine presence. And it's, it's just exquisite to be meeting an individual on that level. So this is one of the things I personally like about the oneness movement. Uh, for all of you guys listening out there, again, this is really a support system that is putting the power and, and, and giving the power to each one of the people in the room. This is not your, you know, old school guru in the front doing it all, which, you know, there is, a, you know, there's positive to that. It's not all bad. I get it. But it's really uh, helping people awaken themselves. And uh, this is just one of the many. This, we have Deeksha we've talked about. We've had different oneness courses you can look on the website and, and check out. And then, of course, you know, if in your area, you can get to a oneness meditation where this I Diksha or this uh, all meditation is happening. Wow, I would suggest doing that. Where did you go to learn all of this? I, I, I have a feeling this wasn't at uh, your Colorado State College. No, it definitely wasn't. Uh, there's a beautiful spiritual school in southern India uh, known as the Oneness University. And it's a small spiritual school that specializes in the awakening of mankind. So you can go there, you can take these very powerful courses. There's a beautiful uh, temple that's built there uh, known as the Oneness Temple, and it's specifically to move uh, mankind into higher states of consciousness. So every month there are specific courses. They're intense, and they awaken you and uh, push and prod you and work all sorts of things out for you to actually access these high states of consciousness. It's Oh, go ahead. No, I'm, it's great. I was just going to say, uh, work things out. <laughs> when I think of working out, I, I think of going to the gym. What does that mean? What does it mean? What are we working out? I, I should, yes, I should clarify that. All of these courses are designed to raise your kundalini. The kundalini is that latent spiritual energy in the base of your spine. When that kundalini starts to awaken, it will rise up and down your spine and goes through all the chakras. When that happens, it's actually releasing charges. We, this is actually a very vital part of the spiritual awakening process because we need to release these charges to actually access the higher states of consciousness. Without awakened kundalini, there is no spiritual growth. The two go hand in hand. So when I mean that it's very powerful, very accelerated, when your kundalini is activated, all you know, there is a lot of energy movement going on. The chakras are being activated. Various parts of the brain are being activated. The heart's being activated, uh, and it's a very accelerated process. Uh, it's it's a thrill. It's a ride in itself. So yeah, it's beautiful. And I think that that's a, this is a very important topic to talk about because I happen to love the word that you're choosing to use, which is called charges. You know, there's other words that have been used in other spiritual followings. But this idea that, listen, if it, one of the, possibly the number one thing we need to be doing in order to rise that kundalini and to raise our awareness is to kick out the darkness we've accidentally picked up from life, the emotional baggage, the stress, we can call it whatever we want. And so it, it, I find it important for people to understand that part of the process sometimes is working things out, like you mentioned, getting into these blocks that we carry with us, this these limiting beliefs and all that fun stuff and getting it out of there. So I appreciate you mentioning that. And uh, yeah, if, if you'd be able to get to India and do that for three weeks at a time or more, I bet that's intense. It is. It's beautiful. There's, I, don't, I don't know of any other place on the planet that is gifting mankind with such a powerful process for awakening. And it's run by 100 monks. They're known as oneness guides, and they're, they're most beautiful beings on the planet. They all reside in very high states of consciousness, and 
they're just love and service to the planet. They're literally walking us through awakening and moving into higher states of consciousness. So if you do have a chance to go over there, please do. Uh, you, you won't forget it. And you would want to keep going back because it's such a special place uh, steeped within the divine consciousness. Very beautiful, very beautiful. So do you feel this world's going to make it? Oh, I know this world's going to make it. We already have. Mankind's already made it. We've, we've had the critical mass. Uh, the tipping point has happened, and now it's just a mass awakening that's happening right now. Okay. It's, not to say, it's not to say we're not going to have more shifting going on the next decade. Mm -hmm. Every single uh, uh, structure, uh, whether it's politics, religion, science, it's all going through a massive uh, transformation right now in the, in the next decade. But uh, it's all about growth and transformation. So. so it's almost like the world itself is going through the same kundalini rising that our bodies are. In order to rise up to a new awakened way of living, we sort of have to face and erase some of the, I don't know, darkness, the charges that we're carrying. Absolutely. Great point. We're being squeezed a little bit. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. So, um, the, you know, the, the final thing I, I'm thinking about asking you is if, there is any type of uh, a blessing you can give, uh, not so much the oneness, uh, I know that's a whole long process, but is there a, isn't there a long distance diksha or an intent diksha that we could do here? Is that possible? Absolutely. I can give intentional diksha for about a minute. Does that work for you? That's exactly perfect. So let's do that. Okay. So if everybody wants to close their eyes and for the next minute or so, just reside in your heart space and I will then start to give the intentional diksha. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Wow, thank you. Julia Desmond, oneness meditator, oneness coach. I truly appreciate your time and, and hopefully we'll get a chance to do it again sometime. Thank you so much. It was nice to see you too. All right.